This talk is the first of two covering the use uh, and adjustment of pacemakers in the ICU. These are temporary pacemakers that are either epicardial wires placed by surgeons during heart operations or temporary um, transvenous wires placed either interoperatively or in emergent situation for pace, patients with uh, symptomatic bradycardia or high risk for AV block. The pacing units you'll actually be using are one of the two following types. Um, the first is a single chamber unit, which you probably will not be using that much of. More commonly, you'll be using a dual chamber pacer much like this, where you can plug in leads from um, the atrium, the ventricle, or both in the case of epicardial leads or in the case of transvenous pacemakers, you just plug it into the ventricle here. These are a little bit nicer in the sense that they have some defaults that when you turn them on, the rate's already at 80 and the atrial output and ventricle output are kind of set in a mid-range at 10 milliamps. In contrast, the single um, lead pacemakers um, have these analog knobs that sometimes get knocked around. It's when you turn it on, you're not really sure what you're getting and has, you have to be very careful about making adjustments so you don't um, you know, completely changed how the pacemaker is behaving um, just by accident. This heart model will show the locations of different type of pacing configurations. If using epicardial leads, they'll be placed through the atrial muscle um, here on the right atrium, and the ventricular wires will be passed down there. If you're using a temporary wire, those are typically balloon tip catheters that are placed in either one of the jugular or femoral veins, those pass into the right heart and actually stay in the right ventricle. Their balloon tip that helps them um, locate and float into that area. And typically the balloon is deflated and a metal tip um, interacts with the heart muscle, um, kind of in the trabecula of the muscle there, um, allowing for capture and pacing. A less common scenario involves the use of a paceport swan catheter, which have, those are usually not floated through the, vent, um, through the femoral veins, but rather in one of the neck veins, through the right heart, and into the pulmonary artery. They're floated in a way that a port at 20 centimeters from the tip of the catheter is in the right ventricle, and that allows a wire to be passed through the catheter and then um, interacts with the uh, right heart muscle, as shown. Um, these wires are bare wires, they're not balloon tips. The catheter itself is a balloon tip that helps it locate in that location. For all temporary wires and paceport swans, the, uh, the wire exits the catheter and then is connected to the pacing box somewhere outside the patient. This short film clip using a clay model shows the placement of epicardial wires. There's a needle at one end that, as you can see, um, bears two electrodes that will then be connected to the pacing box or to an adapter. The other end has two electrodes which are passed through the heart along with a stopper wire there. So once placed into the heart, so the electrodes are interacting with the thick ventricular septal area and then pass through the chest wall is kind of faked here. The needle is then broken off, revealing the two wires, which will then be used to either connect directly to the pacing box itself or ideally with this kind of blue adapter here. This is a three foot cable that has a connector here that will then pop into the box and also allow connection of the electrodes to, um, to a cable that allows the pacing box to be kept well away from the patient's chest wall, which makes it easier to maintain hygiene, maintain awareness of what's going on with the pacemaker, and also securing the wires to the chest in a, in a way that doesn't disturb them that much. This indicates a connector that's used to snap into the top of the pacing box, either um, on the atrial or ventricular side, depending which kind of wire you have. And again, those bare wires can pop into these connectors here. 
different kind of kits also has various adapters that allow them to be connected to either the cable or to um, the orifices on top of the box themselves. Finally, the control interface is shown right here. There's an upper panel and a lower panel. The upper panel allows you to control the heart rate uh, using the dial shown, the atrial output or the ventricular output. And again, the defaults are 80, 10, and 10, respectively, on um, those values. The lower panel um, is activated by pushing the select or menu buttons. And this is a close-up view of what you see there. Uh, this allows, by combination of using the select and menu buttons and, and the dial, to scroll through various options, which include the atrial sensitivity, the, the ventricular sensitivity, which is controlled by moving the knob. Um, you can also control the, um, the PR or the AV interval. And in a different menu, you can control the mode, whether it's DDD, DOO, or the atrial or ventricular analogs of those two. So again, the point of this talk is just to show um, where morphologically the wires are placed in the body and how they connect to the external control devices. The, um, the use of those devices will be covered in the next film.